I am honored to share this recipe with you for two reasons. One, it's really tasty and that's exciting. But two, because a vinegar pie has a long history in the South. There are a few Southern recipes, namely Southern pies, that fall into the category of desperation pies. And a desperation pie, as the name suggests, is a pie that was made with ingredients that people had on hand when really resources were scarce and situations might be kind of desperate. So these desperation pies include things like chess pie, shoe fly pie, cornmeal pie. Vinegar pie is my personal favorite. It might sound odd to you at first, but I promise the sharp acidity of apple cider vinegar and the unique sweetness of apple cider vinegar actually meld really well into the rest of the ingredients that go into this custardy, delicious dessert. Join me in making something that is really a participation in Southern history. Let's go. As with any good pie recipe, we start with our pie dough. I have my pie dough here. It's already chilled. It was made over two hours ago and it's ready to be rolled out and fit into my pie plate. If you're in a time crunch, you can use a store-bought crust. Just Keep in mind that a homemade crust is better in flavor and texture. So I'm gonna roll this out into about an eighth of an inch thickness, fit it into my pie pan, trim it with about a half inch to an inch of overhang, fold the overhang under, and crimp the perimeter of the pie crust. We're then going to line the pie crust with a piece of parchment paper, fill it with pie weights, and blind bake it for a little while just to help it start to crisp and brown before we put the filling in. Blind baking the pie crust here is necessary. If you don't, just throwing the filling into the raw dough and putting it in the oven won't allow the crust to bake all the way through and to become crisp and flaky. I like to press down on the pie dough with my palm to help flatten it first. And then when cracks appear like this one, I can just push them together and press down with my thumb. That way when I start rolling with the rolling pin, the cracks won't widen and become elongated. To get that perfect circle, it's ideal to do a few passes of rolling and then Turn the dough at a 90 degree angle and keep rolling. And this prevents it from becoming an oblong or strange shape. If you get cracks like this in your dough, simply pull it together and press it together with your fingers. The warmth from your fingers will help soften a little bit of the butter in the dough there, which helps it stick together. All right, so I'm now gonna press around the bottom of the edge now I'm just taking a pair of scissors and trimming around the perimeter so that there's about three quarter of an inch overhang. All right, and now my trick, I use these two fingers and my thumb here, and I press with my thumb in between these two fingers, allowing it to create this nice looking round edge. All right, my pie crust is right here, and I have a piece of parchment paper as well. And I'm just gonna fit the parchment paper into the pie shell. And I'm going to fill it with my pie weights. This prevents any of the bottom of the crust from puffing up as it's baking. Okay, I'm going to throw this into a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes, and then I'm going to remove it from the oven, take out the parchment paper with the pie weights, and put it back in the oven, just the crust by itself, for another 10 minutes. And this allows the crust to become lightly brown all over. It's been 20 minutes, and I'm going to take these out and then pop it back in for another 10. You'll notice dark spots at the bottom of the crust, and that's just uncooked dough, and that's why we're popping it back in for another 10 minutes until everything is lightly browned. Compared to all of the steps to blind bake a pie shell, making the filling is so, so easy. We're just dumping all of the filling ingredients into a bowl and whisking until most of the sugar is dissolved and there are no pockets of flour remaining. So in my bowl, I'm going to combine four eggs with one half a cup of granulated sugar, one half a cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, six tablespoons of melted butter, three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. We have two tablespoons of honey and two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. These two work together to complement each other in flavor, to balance the acidity with some rich, deep sweetness. And it's what makes this pie really kind of magical. So, in they go. 
All right, once you have everything in the bowl, just use your whisk, break the egg yolks, and whisk until everything is smooth. Now that my crust is done blind baking, we're ready to bake the whole pie. So I've got my filling here. Uh, it's well mixed and I'm going to pour it into my crust. All right, we're gonna bake this at 350 still, uh, but just for 30 minutes. And what you're looking for is that the center of the pie doesn't jiggle when you tap the pie plate. If it jiggles, that means the filling hasn't set. It should be after 30 minutes, pretty firm and solid. So let's pop it in the oven for 30 minutes. I'll see you in a few. My pie is finished baking and I have let it cool to room temperature. It's imperative that you let it cool all the way because the custard that is the filling has to cool to set completely. So if you cut it while it's warm, it'll kind of ooze out and that's not ideal. You'll notice that the surface is browned. It has kind of these like micro bubbles that have solidified on the top. That's what it should look like. That's great. And a really easy way to decorate the pie is to just dust some powdered sugar over it. It provides a really stark contrast to the deep brown of the filling. Um, and it's really beautiful. This pie is a beautiful expression of some of the most wonderful parts of the South. A place rich with stories and traditions. And to think that this recipe came together as a means of a creative means of making the most of pantry staples during a time that was hard. I think it's a really wonderful picture of the best of Southern food traditions. And it's also really, really tasty. So let me give it a shot. You can see that the custard is semi-solid. It's, it's soft, but it holds its shape. It doesn't like ooze or fall apart. Um, let's give it a go. It's a lot of flavor. The buttery and the salty crust complements this sweet and mouth-filling custardy center to the pie that is both sweet with the subtle richness from the molasses and the brown sugar. Um, but the vinegar in the pie is a tangy thing that you can feel in the back of your mouth. Um, kind of makes your cheeks like squeeze a little bit. It's honestly not that dissimilar in flavor from a cheesecake. It's got that really pleasant and slightly fruity tang that makes it so, so good. Uh, and also makes it really easy to eat a lot of. Give this recipe a shot if it's interesting to you or if you're curious about how vinegar could taste pleasant in a pie. I promise uh, our Southern ancestors knew what they were doing. So give it a shot and you'll enjoy it. If you've enjoyed the video you've seen today, subscribe to the Southern Living YouTube channel where you're sure to find other videos like this one that we know you'll enjoy. Thanks so much. See you next time. Bye.